Halloween. This is Halloween. Hello, people of Earth and beyond. A warm welcome to all my Altaian and Gava friends out there. Yes, I am Pidge for Halloween. I know, Voltron's time is over, and everyone hated season 8, but Pidge is still my darling baby girl, and I love her forever, and as soon as I got this haircut, I decided that I had to be Pidge for Halloween. Also, I made this costume myself, with the help of my mom and my sister, a lot of help from them, and a lot of thanks to them. So if you don't like it, deal with it. So since today is Halloween, and Halloween is typically associated with scaring people, I thought today I'd talk about a semi-kind of related topic. Villains! I say villain like I'm just talking about fantasy, but really these could work for any genre. However, they will work better for books, so for all of my fellow writers out there, here are five ways to make your villain more terrifying. And obviously these are going to be based on my opinion a little bit of what I think is scary, but I'm scared pretty easily. So I feel like this should be a little bit all-encompassing. Number one is don't give your villain an over-the-top name. Most of the time an imposing name is just going to make your villain sound silly. Yes, it works for Tolkien, but that's because he made up names for all of his characters and made them fit his world, and he intentionally used vowels in Saruman and Sauron's names that make them sound imposing. Philologists know what they're doing. But if you try too hard to make your villain's name sound scary, they're going to end up sounding like they're compensating for something. And not in the Shrek way. Voldemort's name may be iconic, but it doesn't strike fear into the hearts of the readers. Just because the characters are afraid of a name doesn't mean that the readers are going to be. In fact, we make fun of it. I, for one, like to call him Moldywort. So make sure the name fits the world and the story, and don't try too hard. Number two is have the villain actually do something. Just telling about how evil or creepy they are isn't going to make the reader afraid of them. Show them burning down an orphanage or killing the strongest man in the kingdom. Not the weakest character, the strongest character. Use whatever abilities you gave them to the extreme. An antagonist who sits on their butt all day does not a suspenseful story make. Number three is don't give them too much emotion. This one may be a bit of a personal preference, but a cold calculating villain is more terrifying than a warmongering hothead. Adding to that, an antagonist who keeps his or her cool during a stressful situation is a lot more dangerous because they won't be blinded by anger and make a mistake. There's a reason psychopathic serial killers are so feared. It's because they literally cannot feel attachment to another human being. And unless killing people makes your villain happy, don't give them any joy. You'll just make them sympathetic. Number four is definitely more of a personal preference, but one that I'd like to see more of. Make the villain unexpected. Maybe it's an archetype that isn't often evilized. Maybe it's a character that turns on a dime. Secret villains are great too. Not knowing who the evil mastermind is until the very end will always be a great plot twist. But what I like to see is the character who you think will always be good turn into the most evil person in the universe. Take Pidge, for example. Sweet, adorable Pidge who's good with technology and wants to help as many people as possible even if she doesn't always understand them. Now what if she were a villain? What if the sweet character suddenly lost all compassion for humanity? Pidge would be an awesome villain because everyone would underestimate her. She can outsmart anyone. She could engineer a super weapon. She could probably work out mind control. She, not that I actually want Pidge to be a villain. Someone write that AU please. And finally, number five, this is definitely the one that I don't see enough of. Let the reader spend time with the villain. Give them a large role in the story. Or better yet, make them the main character. Take the Young Elite series. That was the first series I ever read where the villain was the protagonist. No, Artemis Fowl does not count. The reader gets to see firsthand Adelina's descent into madness. We get to see her make the decision to forsake everything that is good. We see her progression into evil. 
and spending time in her head lets the reader get to know and despise her. Sure, she gets a redemption arc later on, but before that, her rationale, while logical, is still terrifying. So that was five ways to make your villain much scarier. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and have a safe and happy Halloween.